Today's Namaste Yoga is on Maha Lakshmi and Happy Baby Pose. Hello and welcome to episode 162 of Namaste Yoga on Maha Lakshmi. We're going to stay with Adi Lakshmi one more class today. We're going to call her Maha Lakshmi, the Mother Lakshmi, because we're going to work with um, the idea of being like babies today. So we're going to call her Mother Lakshmi today. And uh, happy baby pose. This is going to be an intermediate level class. And so today, I wanted to say that the teachers are off and running on their 10-week continuing education course. They started last weekend, and I am starting a waiting list for the next continuing education course for teachers, and I'll actually be contacting people for interviews in the next couple of weeks because we already have almost eight people, and I I have a limit to eight people in the course. We almost have eight people on that waiting list already for the course. So if you're interested in that information for the teacher training, continuing education is on my website at melissawest.com under teacher training. We've been doing lots of filming this week for the members and the membership site on the Yoga for Insomnia series. In fact, we just turned the video camera off for the Pranayama series for Yoga Insomnia. We've already filmed two one-hour classes, Yoga for Insomnia, the daytime series, which is a really vigorous vinyasa style class to rid you of excessive energy to help you sleep at night and a Yoga for Insomnia evening class, a quieter yin style class with long holds and a long shavasana evening class to help you get a really deep sleep. So as I mentioned, we just filmed the pranayama class, breath practices help to help you get a good deep sleep. And also there's breath practices in there for when you wake up at night and can't get back to sleep as well. Um, We're also going to be filming tomorrow, uh, you are what you eat cooking class that I'm really excited about with ideas for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and even, uh, little before bed snack that will help you sleep so fun (laughs) and then a yoga for mental ease class um, early next week and all this will be going on the membership site on February 1st 2013 so loads and loads of research hours went into this and filming hours this is really specialized knowledge and we save our really primo content for our members so you can check that all out at melissawest.com you'll definitely might if you're not already a member you'll probably want to check that out and become a member before february 1st to get access to that primo content all the other primo content on the membership site and become a part of our amazing community I have a testimonial for you, but as I'm looking down here, I also just want to say thank you so much to Linda who sent me this beautiful gift that I got last week right after we filmed Namaste Yoga. She sent me this really gorgeous wood bracelet with my favorite Ganesh on it. So cute. Remover of obstacles. So really nice bracelet. So thank you, Linda Perez, for this. Thank you so much. Such a nice gesture. Who doesn't love Ganesh? She's she's my Facebook friend. Everybody, um, I post lots of pictures of Ganesh on my Facebook, on my personal Facebook page, to the point now that people are posting Ganesh pictures for me on my Facebook page now. (laughs) So people are starting to notice this Ganesh love that I have. My daughter got me this gorgeous white Ganesh for uh, for Christmas this year. I digress. Okay, so today's testimonial comes from Lena from Facebook. This was so such a beautiful testimonial. She said, Dear Melissa, I wanted to express my gratitude to you. My friend Lucy Petrova told me about you, and I 
join in um, you on YouTube. She's from Moscow, so English is not her first language. It's so beautiful. Whatever you do for the people. I got a yoga class here in Moscow, but it was a yoga therapy, just exercise, but no spirituality. From you came a beautiful energy. You radiate peace and balance and kindness. I am very glad I know you now, and your lessons have helped me to overcome many psychological problems in my life. Thank you so much. So that was a really sweet testimonial. Thank you so much for that. So thank you so much. If you do find these episodes are beneficial to you, we appreciate so much you leaving your testimonials and ratings on iTunes. Thank you to our sponsor, Squeezed, at squeezed.ca. Today I'm wearing one of my favorite outfits, the monochromatic gray. Always makes me think of my friend Mandy when I wear this outfit because she loves gray. I guess I think everything in her wardrobe is gray. I always tease her about that and now I have this gray outfit and I really like it. <laughs> and then thank you to our sponsor Dusky Leaf for our yoga mat and my strap that I'm going to be using today and our blocks and my really big yoga bag. I love that too. Yeah, duskyleaf.ca. Okay, let's get to our class for today. Our Maha Lakshmi Happy Baby class. You're going to need a bolster today and a yoga strap today. And we're going to start lying down on your back. So you can lie down on your back in Shavasana. And since you're going to have a bolster anyways, you could put the bolster under your knees to begin. Make yourself as comfortable as possible. Allow yourself to settle in on the ground. Tuck your shoulder blades underneath you. Check in with your neck and your head and see if your neck is in neutral alignment. And you do that by seeing if your chin and forehead are on the same level. And if, they're, if your chin's higher than your forehead, you may need to place a small pillow or a blanket underneath your head. And then take a deep breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. And take as many of those falling out breaths as you need to allow yourself to land here and settle in now. Last week we began the series with the eight forms of Lakshmi and we started with Adi Lakshmi, the great Lakshmi, also known as Maha Lakshmi. In episode 161 of Namaste Yoga, we focused on her association with the lotus flower and its connection with the womb and creation. So since then, I've had more insight into what this would look like, and I would like to share it with you in today's class. So I would like to be so bold as to say that Mahalakshmi is the goddess of birth and new beginnings. Since she is the womb that contains all of life, she knows what it is to birth something. And I've been thinking a lot about this metaphor of growing something in your womb and then laboring it to birth since teaching that class last week. Prior to birth, there is a period of gestation. It is the development of the embryo in a mammal between conception and birth. It takes about 266 days in humans. And here's an interesting fact. It takes 624 days in elephants. 
This is true of anything that we want to birth. It takes time to develop an idea or plan it in our mind before it comes to fruition. So you can think about our chakras as you, you get the idea, it comes into your third eye chakra, comes down into your throat chakra, and you have to bring it down into reality. You have to fall in love with the idea. It takes effort in your third chakra. You have to create it in your womb, and then you have to birth it and bring it out into the world. <laughs> That's how it works down through the chakra systems. So no matter how much we want to, we cannot rush the process. So after the period of gestation, there is the process of labor. This can be actually downright painful to actually birth your idea, to get it out into the world. And it involves work. That's why they call it labor. Now here was my real light bulb moment this week. <laughs> After you go through the birthing process, you have a baby, not an adult. <laughs> you have a project in its infancy. So this week as I launched the continuing education course for teachers, I was reminded by Mahalakshmi to begin at the beginning, to allow myself to be a baby. So reflect on this idea. What would it be like to allow yourself to go through all the stages? Gestation, labor, to allow yourself to be at the beginning like a baby. When we start new things, we are like babies. It's a good idea to be gentle with ourselves like babies and to take lots of extra time to rest and sleep and nap like babies. That's how we're going to integrate all the new information that's coming at us. That's how babies manage in a world where everything is new. You can even call on Maha Lakshmi to help you with this. You can call on her to help you with your process of gestation, labor, birthing, being a baby, and being present to each stage of your path. Ask her to dispel your fear and ask her to help you appreciate each and every stage of the journey. You don't need to rush to the end of the path. As you rest back here, you might want to ask yourself these questions. Are you at the beginning of something in your life? Are you trying to rush to get to the end? What would it be like to be a beginner? To be at the beginning? To be like a baby? So as you reflect on these questions, begin to form your intention for this class. My intention for this class is for us to be like babies. <laughs> but you can inform your own intention for this class. What is it that you would like to receive from this class? Why did you choose this class? And what would you like to receive from practicing yoga over this next hour? So when you've formed your intention, you can start to deepen your breath and wiggle and stretch out. We are going to start by staying on your back. You'll need your bolster. And you won't need your strap quite yet, but have it close by. Okay, I will face that way, no problem. Strap close by. Bolster, less than 
Head this way. Okay. <laughs> we can do that. All right. So here is the plan. The easiest way to get your bolster where you need it is to lie with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor and then your bolster beside you horizontally like this. If you don't have a bolster, you can do all these poses that we're gonna do at the beginning without a bolster, even with a rolled up blanket or towel underneath you. You can improvise. Press into your feet and get that bolster right underneath your pelvis. And we're going to start with half happy baby over the bolster. So what that looks like is you're going to bend your right knee in and hold on to the bottom of your foot and extend your left leg out. So you'll get a nice opening of your left hip. And this is just a really nice supported way to get into that deep hip stretch here at the beginning of your class. So nice, slow, deep breath. Let yourself be like a baby. Find the ease in this pose. And then you can release your bent right leg and let your right leg fall long over your bolster. So this becomes the leg that is going to be getting the stretch at the front of your hip. And your left leg is going to become the one that is bent in towards your armpit. So it's bent at a 90 degree angle. Your right leg is stretching over your bolster. Okay, and then you're going to release this leg and get your strap that's close by and oh, stretch both your legs out, that feels good too. Oh, this class is all about feeling good because babies are all about making themselves feel good all the time. They don't feel, they cry, feel good, they cry and let you know. <laughs> okay, so your legs are straight out and then we're basically going to do the same thing except for a hamstring stretch for it. So you'll bend your right leg in, hook up your right foot and take your right leg straight in the air with your left leg hanging long over your bolster. Nice long, slow, deep breaths. switch your legs so this time your right leg will hang over your bolster and you'll hook your left leg up 
Draw your left leg in. Open up the space in the back of your leg. And then release your legs down and just let them hang over your bolster again. You guys can just hang here for a minute while I check what's next. All right, so we're gonna make our way up to kneeling now. So to come off your bolster, bend your knees, place your feet flat on the floor, press into your feet, and then pull your bolster out from underneath you. And then roll to your side and come up onto all fours and why don't you guys do a little bit of cat pose oh i'm wearing my mic <laughs> i was gonna find my mic <laughs> well isn't that convenient <laughs> all right we're gonna do some lunge pose walk your hands back to your knees and walk your left leg through for lunge pose and um Let's come upright for lunge to start. So sink into your left foot. Come upright and reach your right arm up. So you feel that all the way through the front of your right hip. So I'm actually gonna pad underneath my knee here. So I'm just gonna come out of the pose. So you can roll up your mat if you want, or you can take a blanket and put it underneath your knee. So you've got extra padding and lunge pose. <laughs> oh, much better. And then what we're gonna do is come and take both your hands on the inside of your left foot, and we're gonna do lizard pose. So the way that works is you're going to either keep your hands on the inside of your left foot, or maybe come down onto your forearms, either your right forearm, or maybe both your right and left forearm or close to it as you can today. on back and we'll switch sides so I can see in the background here that it's the <laughs> just want to let you know the heater is going like all the time here today because it's minus 25 Celsius out today we're in the middle of January in Canada <laughs> it's really cold <laughs> and so I can see the heat's kind of creating a mirage <laughs> like effect here in the background. Cause it's really, really cold out and the heater's going nonstop. So we're nice and toasty in here in the solarium with all the light coming in and the heater on, but it's creating this kind of really weird visual effect for our lighting, just so you know what's going on. I'm actually really nice and toasty warm. Okay, let's do lunge pose on the other side. You're gonna walk your right leg through. 
and we'll start with that upright version of lunge and sink down through your right foot come upright and bring your left arm up so thankfully it's not as cold here as it is in Montreal and Ottawa today I heard minus 35 for Ottawa I can't even imagine how cold it must be in Montreal or Manitoba right now or whew. or none of it <laughs> it's not even cold here Okay, from here we'll come down and try the lizard pose on this side. So lots of options here. You can take your hands to the inside of your right foot. Or you can come down onto your forearms, left arm down and right arm down as much as it wants to come down today or all the way down. step out of this and we'll come back to downward facing dog so if you are using something for your knees you can unfold your mat or place your blanket off to the side and come into downward facing dog so hands underneath your shoulders Knees underneath your hips, tuck your toes under, breathe in. Fingers spread nice and wide. Exhale, lift your hips. Inhale, take your right leg up, shake it out. And then bring your right knee forward to your right wrist, your left heel to your left hip bone, and reach your left leg back long. And then you're going to fold forward over your bent right leg for pigeon pose. Stretch out your hips a little bit more to prepare for happy baby pose. Reaching your left leg really long, back long, so that you don't grade on your back left knee. And then you can step back into downward facing dog take your hands underneath your shoulders curl your left toe under step back into downward facing dog and take your left leg back and up give it a shake and a wiggle and bring your left knee up to your left wrist your right heel to your right hip bone reach your right leg back and long fold forward over your bent left knee
Okay, and then from here, we're gonna come out of this pose and back to a, a squat. So, the way that's gonna work is I'm gonna tuck your toes under neath your hip bones and you're gonna open your knees so that you can place your body between your knees and sink your heels back towards the ground. So some of you who have more open Achilles than me will be able to reach your heels all the way to the ground and be flat footed here. So just depending on your flexibility, um, a lot of you will be able to be flat footed here. not that flexible here so that is the squat pose so you're reaching your heels towards the ground here or they're already on the ground here And then from here, you're going to roll up to standing. Okay, <clears throat> from standing today, we're going to practice chair pose to get that position that will be in a happy baby pose later from standing. So you can stand with your feet underneath your hip bones, your feet parallel spread your toes and bring your arms out in front of you pull your shoulders back inhale and exhale and sit back as though you're sitting into a small chair so you're taking that shape as close as you can to it because it's hard in this position to gravity to do it um, and so you're taking the shape of happy baby pose or close to it. Keep your tailbone tucked under, lift up through your pelvic floor, draw your navel back to your spine. Keep your ears back over your shoulders and breathe. And slowly come up to standing and shake out your legs. <laughs> Great. Okay. So we're going to come back down onto the mat for rabbit pose. Okay, so from this position, we're going to do a pose called rabbit pose. And I chose this yoga pose for two reasons. One is because I've seen babies do it before and <laughs> they're so cute and they have so much fun with it and they love it. And number two is that the metaphysical attributes of this pose are all about surrendering and letting go. And I think it's about it really ties in with our theme today of letting go of being an adult and having to be at the end and being perfect and letting yourself be at the beginning and letting yourself be a baby. So 
It's a pose that whenever I teach it in class, there's so much resistance to. <laughs> so I always find that so interesting as well. It, hel it does help. Gosh, I'm going to have to add a blanket as a prop for this class <laughs> since I've used it so much. Um, it does help to double up your yoga mat or use a blanket underneath your head because the top of your head is tender, just like the soft spot on a baby's head. <laughs> so the way it works is you come onto all fours and you can place the top of your head on the, on your, between your hands. So before we do this, let me say that there are contraindications to this pose. If you have any neck injuries and you can't place weight on your head because of injuries to your cervical spine or if you have any reasons why you shouldn't do that because of um, putting pressure on your head because of glaucoma or any issues in your head then of course you shouldn't do this pose if the resistance is psychological then you should do this pose <laughs> okay so here we go we're going to start on all fours and then you're going to place the crown of your head between your hands and you can stay right here and you can also control how much weight goes on your head here as well by pressing into your hands. And then the second part of this is to interlace your fingers and bring your rabbit ears up. So you see kids doing this all the time, this part, and you can add your rabbit ears. So there is a real surrendering of your head to your heart in this pose. It's a powerful pose. It's also called poor man's headstand. Great preparation for headstand. and then release your arms down. Take your hands on either side of your head and push yourself up. Great. Good job. Thank you everybody for doing that pose. <laughs> okay, then we're gonna come down onto your stomachs and lie on your bellies. And we're going to do back bends. And this is, like when babies are learning to get up, this this is the part of class where we're gonna be like, really be like babies. So when babies are learning to look up and look around at their world, they do this back bend, this um, locust back bend. So if you have your hands down by the side of your body and roll your shoulders back and up, keep your ears back over your shoulders, press the front of your pelvis into the ground, and inhale, lift your chest up off the ground and just look up around at the world around you. Imagine you're just like a baby. Something happened and you want to see what's going on. back down okay and then take your hands underneath your shoulder push yourself up onto all fours and bring your knees up underneath you and before um, this is how we used to let babies sleep you're gonna bring your knees right up underneath you bring your hands down by your feet so this is called happy baby pose your little bums in the air.
Okay, great. So now we're going to do um, a, one of the big deals for babies is when they learn to roll over. So we're going to do that from the ground. This is such a great twist that I learned from my Pilates training. Um, you take your body into an X shape with your arms and your legs. And you reach your right leg long. And you cross it over your body. And you cross, cross, cross. Hmm. Sorry, we need to set that up a little bit better. <laughs> take your arms straight overhead, so not so much of an X. <laughs> And then reach your right leg long. Cross your right leg over your body until you flop onto your back. And then, so you rolled over. Yay, you! Good baby! <laughs> and isn't it cool how mummies go, yay, you rolled over when they roll over. And then, then they want to see them roll back. So you take your right hand to your right shoulder. You slide it across your chest. Keep sliding, keep sliding, keep sliding until you roll all the way back. And it's a wonderful twist for your spine. And then we'll roll the other way. So this time, just take your right arm straight up. I'm sure you'll have a little more room than me, hopefully. And you're going to reach your left leg long. Cross it over your body until you roll all the way onto your back. <laughs> and then, yay, you rolled over again. Good baby. And then you take your left hand to your left shoulder. Slide it across your body. And keep reaching, reaching, reaching until you roll back. What a good baby. You rolled both ways and back. Amazing baby. Okay. And then we have one more pose. The quintessential baby pose. Happy baby pose. So you can lie on your back now. Okay, and babies just have so much fun with this. So lie on your back with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. And draw your knees in towards your chest. Hold on to the outside edges of your feet. Drop your shoulders, draw your knees towards your armpits. So Ananda Balasana, happy baby pose. Allow yourself to be a baby. Be at the beginning. You don't have to be an adult or at the end of the path when you start a new project. Okay, oh. <laughs> all right, great. So see whatever else your happy baby wants to do before you rest in Shavasana, because babies get to nap whenever they want. Mommies like it when babies nap. <laughs> okay, so take your legs out long, or you can use your bolster and tuck your bolster underneath your knees. Tuck your shoulder blades under. Oh, nap time for the babies. So let yourself get comfortable. And I'll sit up and give you some reflections in Shavasana on our class.
So reflect back on the metaphor of birthing and being like a baby. Notice what it would be like to give yourself time for the period of gestation of ideas. To allow an idea or a plan to come to fruition. To not rush the process. And even once you've gone through the process of labor, of bringing something to life, what would it be like to allow yourself to be at the beginning? Not an adult, but a baby. To be an infant. And to be gentle with yourself like a baby. Giving yourself lots of time to integrate. So as you reflect back on today's theme of being like a baby, what seems most important to you? What stands out? What seems significant? And how does that thing that stands out, that seems most important, relate to the rest of your life? What's the connection? How are you going to carry it with you as you move off your mat and into your life? What's one small thing that you can carry with you into your life this week? Not a big earth shattering change. Just one small thing you can integrate into your life. like a baby. And then when you feel ready, can start to wiggle and stretch out. Inviting movement back into your body. Deepening your breath. Bend your knees and roll to your side. And then make your way up to seated.
Thank you for joining me for episode 162 of Namaste Yoga. I'll see you on the membership site for next week for Namaste Yoga. Namaste.